Hello and welcome to another episode of Honk. I'm your host, David Blue, and today I'm in the 2015 Chevrolet Impala, and I am outside my dentist's office in a, well, what used to be a field. Uh, it, it used to be a cherry field. Back in the 60s, when the first Impala was, was hot shit, you know, this, this, was, this was rural. It was productive, and it was... Well, I don't know. Actually, I wasn't there. But, um, Chevy was there. Are they the same company now? No. Not really. Not at all. Is this the same car as the original Impala? I can't give you specs of the original Impala, but rear-wheel drive. Big. V8. Sort of like the epitome of style, right? It's like the, it's like the, the, the big one. The top one. The good one. Uh, today. 3.6 liter V6 front wheel drive, but it's making 305 horsepower and I can tell you it's pretty peppy. Now it's, it still is the epitome for the middle class. And that's kind of sad when you look at it because yes, it's styled to be more aggressive than, than most of, of the cars in its segment, but it's so big and poofy and regulated and crumple zoned and uninspiring. It really is uninspiring being in this car. I understand that things have changed. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Things change, right? So let's change the name. Let's not input some styling cues. Let's rebuild everything and make it modern rather than trying to tie it back to the field. Why this is significant is because 10 years ago, a subdivision was built on it, but it's 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 like a small, it's supposed to be like a small town. They had a bakery. Of course, it goes out of business and it cycles just 24-7, but one business that remains, I can tell you, is a gym that's open 24 hours. And if that, I feel like that is the equivalent of the Impala. We're not alive. We're, we're not alive. This car is a 24-hour gym. Modern cars are completely different. They're completely different from everything in the past. You just have to rethink everything. And it, I could offer you numbers and specs and cubic feet of storage space, and but you're not going to come to me for that. So what can I say about this car? Well, not much. I can tell you that it's uninspiring. I can tell you that it's pretty much the same as most of the other cars in its segment. I can also tell you what I like about it. Love the steering. It's completely lifeless, but it's also refined, I guess would be the term. I've never driven a Chevy that felt this way. I like the gauges. I like the font. I have a feeling it's probably like Helvetica or something. Now, when I drove the cruise, I really just had this feeling in me that I just wanted to beat the shit out of it. I just wanted to, to evoke some life from it. And I have that feeling a little bit less in this car. It's making a noise. Why? It just made a noise. I. So we've got this wraparound dash trend. This dash, it starts from here and it grabs all the way around. And I gotta say, Chevy, it, it looks a lot better in the XJ Jag, um, where it came from, which it's kind of it's kind of cheap, but we've still got to sort of make it a little bit tacky because it is an American car. I see myself. I see no soul. Uh. So it's a honk review. Key fob. Um, I'm told these are three hundred dollars. So yeah, I, that's it's got a key at ignition and not a push button start. Which is really funny because Chevy's been having ignition issues lately, so we'll see if I die. I don't think I'll die. If the engine stops unexpectedly while I'm moving forward, I simply move to the side of the road and push down on the brakes. Yeah. It's really not that hard. My advice to you Chevy owners that uh, are suing the company and trying to get a bunch of money out of them is, if it happens, just pull over. This ignition actually, ironically, Feels pretty, pretty sketchy, to be honest. <laughs> That's pretty great. I'm turning the key now. That V6 just, you know, real power, real power. I'm about to get underway. First, I'm gonna turn on my navigation here. I I'm pushing the navigation button to show me a map, but it says no active route. There's currently no active route. Press the OnStar button to set an active route. But if I push the OnStar button, then it calls OnStar, and I don't know who's gonna pay for that because it's not gonna be me, so. I'm going to pull, or no, I'm going to push the parking brake button forward, and then you hear this noise coming from the back of the car that's unsettling, and then it says park brake release. Let's get out of here before we scare the locals. It is two in the morning, and I feel like they 
They know the face of the Impala, but uh, it's doing things they don't expect, like driving quickly. Oh, dear. Driving along in my Impala, going home to see my wife, Paula. Let's turn on the radio. Perhaps I'll feel something. The, the problem is the cadenza is interesting. It's new. It's well-priced. It's better looking, I think. I think that's subjective, uh, very subjective, because it seems that most people tend to prefer the Impala. At least in this part of the world, in this class of human being, and they're the target market. Even though the Cadenza may be a better car, it may be a more interesting car, this car will probably outsell it. I don't remember the, the price of the Chevy, I think it's just called the SS, their new sports sedan. Much cooler though. Wait, what kind of advice is that? I, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not talking to me. I'm talking to, who am I talking to? I'm talking to fans of the middle. This is too fancy for the middle, isn't it? Much too fancy. I must be out of touch. So this isn't the middle, this is more like dentist's car. Dentist in the Midwest. He wants an Audi, but he buys this. Oh, that is just gross. That trim piece, just that that noise. I'm gonna be drumming my fingers on this. I'm a dentist. My stepchild is in the back seat watching Lion King 56 on our portable DVD player for the 59th time. I feel like you're you've got to be a divorcee if you're in an Impala, right? Because you're, it's not the first thing you're gonna get. So the Impala is like your second wife, and it's like a 24 hour gym. There's two things second wife, maybe even, no, not third. Second wife, 24 hour gym. That's a badass car, dude. It's badass. Emily, I think we'll go out to eat tonight. <laughs> what do you think? I'll bring the Impala around the house. You can get all dressed up and we'll go to Buffalo Wild Wings. They build the chassis, it's standardized, it's global. It's this global chassis, it's all good. It's got electric steering, you know, it's all modern. It's just as good as it can be, right? Flawless. And then they just throw bits on there to try to form some concept of brand identity because we've got all this leftover adoration for American cars that's shoved out down everyone's throats and then shitted out and then given to their kids. I got I got the new Impala. It looks good. They managed to make a car that still has that Americanness and can represent that Americanness globally. Well, it's got a little bit of NASCAR and a little bit of Jaguar. And you know, that's that's good. And we can do that with modern cars. It's amazing. It's just sad because what it is is we put all, get all this technology we accept it as new, but then we take all this old stuff from the past and try to graft it on. For a while, it was grafting the technology on the old stuff. Now it's grafting the old stuff on the technology. I personally prefer the Cadenza because it's fresh, it's new. It doesn't have, I've said this a billion times, it doesn't have this identity, this brand identity that Chevrolet does, but it will someday. And someday it'll go through the same thing. But what Chevy has to do is they have to go and they have to refresh themselves. And in a lot of ways, they have. The fact that this car is competitive at all means that a lot has changed at GM. It's got horsepower. 300 horsepower is obscene. Watch this. I mean, I actually got torque steer. We're on the interstate now. Really tall gears here. I'm sitting at 67 miles an hour and at 1600 RPM. Got some road noise. Here's a great thing uh, on there. Let's see, there's got a, in this info thing, which is incredibly distracting. I'm going to get into a car accident. So you just go on this little wheel here on the steering wheel. You just go left and then this thing slides out. You go info, uh, oh, okay, left. Oh wait, no, 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 okay. And I can go up and I can view the coolant temperature. My coolant temperature is currently at 177 degrees. That means absolutely nothing to me. The data is already in your car, so why not throw it on there, but who's gonna give a shit? Let's go through the tire pressures here. Left front tire is at 32 pounds per square inch. Right front tire is at 33 pounds per square inch. 
We're now passing uh, Midway USA. There's a show about that. Left rear tires, 31 pounds per square inch. Right rear is 32. Did I already go? Like, left, okay, left front's 32. Right front's 33. Oh, that's a fun toy. Okay, so I can actually just change so I, I can go up and down on my cruise control here and set it to the, to the speed. And then it's got, it's got the little number there that I'm set to, just gadgets, you know. I can adjust my volume up here on the steering wheel. Buttons on the steering wheel are crisp. The responses are fairly immediate. If you do try to do things, too many things at once, it gets bogged down. The one thing I do like about this trim level is that it doesn't have any of the stupid automated stuff. So yes, the Impala does suffer from the Chevy upper middle class dreariness, right? I mean, ashen gray metallic. But where it really shines is when you open up the throttle. I mean, torque steer. The torque steer is the most valuable component of this car because it lets me know that, by golly, this thing really is alive. It's actually here. If there's any reason to buy a car to the target market of the Impala, that engine is it. It really is good, but I really can't see you using that every day. Where it will benefit you every day is in efficiency. Um, that's about it. The minimal amount of buttons for the infotainment system is such a blessing. You have no idea. All the things you need to know are right here. I, in fact, I don't think I've seen a modern infotainment system laid out as well as this one. Wait a second, we're on a country road, so just forget about that. So you put it down to manual. Oh, wow. Just the perfect amount of engine noise invades the cabin because when it's idling, it is just completely quiet, but then when you step on it, make no mistake, that is an American noise. In the cadenza, when you get rowdy, the stability control system just stops you, but in this, it really allows you to kind of slide around a bit and doesn't have that just stop. There, I would not have been able to make that turn the way I did. All right, time for the Classic David Blue quirk. Up. I'll rationalize that test. That test is to confuse active steering. Wow, I almost had a collision with an owl. It is a sign from the Christian God that this Impala is quite all right. So around town, the Impala is manageable. It's quiet. It absorbs bumps from the decaying infrastructure of this country. It's good looking, but it's not gonna scare off anybody and it's not gonna stand out all that much. That engine is just a star, it's stellar. When you're driving it quickly, it is agile. And even though you're in this driving position that makes you feel a little bit enclosed, which is sort of a Chevy trend nowadays, we've got these big mirrors out to the side. We've got a nice view to the back. When you decide to take your Impala to a uh, track day, as of course you're gonna do, right? Take your full-size family sedan to the track day. It's uh, flat in the corners. The braking is uh, less than ideal, but um, it's grippy, flat, competent. Everything a full-size sedan is not supposed to be. Honestly, I could make fun of Chevrolet's electronic stability control, Stabila Track, for its name because it sort of sounds like something you'd uh, order on a lawnmower. I mean, it's Stabila Track. Like, make fun of it for the name, but what really matters is that it's better than the Kias. It's good. In a sedan. If you're gonna have horsepower in a sedan, you might as well make it American because it's gonna sound really mean. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Because you don't expect there to be power there, the power just feels unlimited. It just feels like I would never even need half of it.
Of course you don't need the V6, but where's the downside? You have the option of getting an Impala with a 2.4 liter inline 4, but I can't see why you would. The 6 beats it by over 100 horsepower and only asks for 4 less miles to the gallon, if we're going by the highway figure. Considering this example has averaged over 26 mpg in the last 3000 miles of who knows what, I'm betting you can do better and the intelligence of that 6-speed auto should prove a useful arrow in your quiver. I haven't driven one with a 4, but I'd consider it highly unlikely you'd find reverting to be worth saving 3000 bucks. And I know I've been doting on the Impala's torque steer for the entire video, but the question will be asked, is 300 horsepower in a front-wheel drive okay? Will you find yourself torque steering your way through an occupied playground at 60 miles an hour because your attention lapsed to change the radio dial? In the case of everything I've driven in the past, Probably, but in this, I don't think so. The Impala bites only when you provoke it, and even then it's barely a nuisance with your hand on the wheel. And if you uh, find yourself under hands-free hard acceleration often, I'd suggest you stick to public transportation because uh, that's not going to hold up in court. The Impala wants to be proud of its name. It wants to tout it everywhere. But uh, its performance is just about the only thing it's got to be proud of. Of course, there are people that are going to appreciate that. The combination of the engine's beautifully refined power delivery, the stability controls, fun parent wit, and the suspension's ever-vigilant response makes for quite a laugh. So much so that I don't particularly want to do the portion where I talk about the interior and sit in the back and stuff. I just want to keep driving, but I can't do that. I myself into the back seat here and it's uh, roomy. Got plenty of leg room. I've got these seats which are cheap. No, maybe not. Not cheap, they're livable. We got this continuing line that moves all the way up to the front of the dash up there. If you take a look at that graphic, it just appears that we're going to tie an anchor to our child and uh, chuck them into the river there. Just let them drown. We got a redeeming feature down on the center console here, which is a place to put your phone and it's rubberized and i would show you but you can't see it in this light. I do like that there's nothing bullshitty back here, there's nothing distracting. It's just good. And it is good. I've got to note finally how wonderfully laid out the Impala's infotainment system is. Though I don't have all that much experience with the most recent in-car touchscreen stuff, it's still worth something to title it as the best I've ever used. It's as if the people designing it have actually used these things on their own time. For that matter, the entire center stack is perfect. There are the perfect number of buttons. Not too many, not too few. And they're exactly where they should be. Commendable, but frankly irrelevant given the probability of a third party takeover for in-car operating systems in the future. So, is the 2015 Chevy Impala competitive? In the market, yes. Is it the best in the market for what the target market wants? Maybe. Not really. It's too performance oriented. In some places, it's being adopted as the new police car. As the new police car, I, you know, perfect. As the young professional's commuter car, absolutely perfect. But it's not the most interesting not the best looking, not the best value. And although I have limited experience in, in the Consumer Reports-esque level of opinion, I'm gonna say that the Cadenza is just gonna beat this one out. But again, it just all depends on if you want interesting or if you are looking for something American, for something aggressive looking, for something distinctly Chevy, then this is it. It's the best Chevy's got to offer and it's not bad. It's not awful. <laughs> it's, it's not disgusting. And it didn't kill me. Um, so hey, then again, those recall issues, the price. So I guess the most important thing, um, if you're watching this honk review as a honk review, not the best by Cadenza. If you're watching this for any other reason, then don't watch it. Go watch the Consumer Reports review. Go watch what uh, Wired Magazine has to say about this car. Because they're probably going to be more of what you want. So, the 2015 Chevy Impala. It is your second wife. It is a 24-hour gym. Thank you. I'm David Blue. For everybody at drywall.ws, have a good morning.